In this example, we're going to be coding up what is called the Collatz conjecture in C. Now, before I begin, let me actually explain what the Collatz conjecture is. What is so famous about it is that it's actually very simple to explain. So let me just go ahead and save myself a C file here. I'm just going to call it Collatz.C. And let me just put some comments in here. In C, when you want to do comments, multi-line comments, you do slash asterisk. Everything I type here will be ignored until the asterisk slash. So what is the Collatz conjecture? Well, if I am given a number, now these have to be integers, just nice positive integers, just nice whole numbers, 3, 7, 8, no numbers like pi or 3 halves or anything like that. So if the number, which I'm going to call n, is odd, then what we're going to do is we're going to take that number and do 3 times it plus 1. And then we're going to continue looking at the numbers and asking these questions. So then I'll look at 3 times n plus 1. That'll be my new n, my new number. If it's odd, I'll do this again, 3 times n plus 1. And you carry on like this. But then what if n is even? Well, then we divide it by 2. So if I do 3 times n plus 1 from my previous odd n, and I get an even number, like say 4, well, then I would divide it by 2. And then I go back and go, well, I've got 2. Is 2 even or odd? 2 is even, so I'll divide it by 2, and then I get 1. Well, if n is 1, we stop. So what I'm going to be doing is writing code to print out the terms in this sequence. Now, by the way, I said this is the Collatz conjecture, and I didn't ask a question. I just said, give me a number. If it's odd, do this. If it's even, do this, and keep doing this until it's 1. The Collatz conjecture is that for all numbers, for all integers really, but for all numbers in, this sequence will end. That's the Collatz conjecture, that this will always finish. It may go on for a very, very long time, but eventually the all numbers, if you follow this pattern, will go down to 1. Now, if we put a number in here and it never ends, um, either it's very long or we just disproved the Collatz conjecture, so that will be interesting. But I'm going to assume that it's true, and I'm going to code it up. So first things first, I know I'm going to be printing stuff out. So I'm going to do hash include stdio.h, so standard input output.h. I'm going to make my main function. I'm just going to leave this blank right here, even though sometimes it has stuff, because I'm not going to be using any sort of input from the terminal. And before I even type in main, I know that I'm going to type up a colots function. Now, there's actually two ways I could do this. The first way is iterative, which just means I'm going to go through these steps and, you know, just that's it. There's nothing much more to say about that for now. The other way is recursion. So first I'm going to go ahead and do this iteratively. Then when I've done that, it'll be easier to understand what recursion is and I'll sort of end on that. And keep in mind that when I get to that, if recursion is kind of, you know, you're like, whoa, what's going on? Don't worry, that's everyone's reaction to recursion initially. And focus on understanding the iterative first, which is why I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do void colots iterative. So this is me declaring a function. So I'm just saying, oh, there's something here that I want to do. And I'm separating it from the main. I'm going to call it when I want to do it. And when I call it, I'm going to give it a number. OK? And now we just code as if everything was in here. All right. So I'm trying to code this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do while n is greater than 1. Notice that if n is 1, we want to stop. So I'm going to start off saying while n is greater than 1. All right. Now, also, I want to point out I am doing this off the top of my head. And so I'm going to explain everything I'm typing. But I may go, ooh, better way to do that, and erase stuff and retype it. That's going to be part when you code. That's what's going to happen as well, is you'll be typing something out. And you'll go, oh, wait a minute. I could do this better, and then tweak it right there. OK, so but for now, while n is greater than 1. All right, well, what do I want to check? Well, I want to check if n is odd or even. I'm going to do if n mod 2 equals 1. Let me pause there. If you think about that, what does it mean for a number to be odd? Well, if I divide it by 2, I have a remainder of 1. If it was even and I divided it by 2, I would have a remainder of 0. So this is the same thing as checking if n is odd, if the remainder when I divide by 2 is 1. All right. Now inside here, if n mod 2 what? Well, 
first of all, I want to print out the number I currently have. So print out my number. And then what do I want to do? Well, I want to set this number equal to 3 times itself plus 1. And then I'm going to go from there. I'm also going to put little arrows pointing to each next number in this uh, sequence when I print it out. This is going to make it look pretty. Now, one thing I have to worry about is what if it's the last number? What if I'm done, right? I'm printing out one. I don't want to print out the last number and then have an arrow pointing over. Well, think about this. If I have an odd number, what am I going to do to it? Well, I'm going to multiply it by 3 and add 1. For positive numbers, that's never going to give me a 1. So whenever I have an odd number, I always know there's going to be another term after this, and I'm going to be putting an arrow. So that's why I'm doing that for sure. But then we do else if n mod 2 is 0, which is the same thing as saying as it's even. right? If I divide by 2 and there's no remainder, that's the definition of even. OK, similar thing. Print out the number I currently have. Notice I'm not putting an arrow yet because I don't know for sure if there will be another term. What if I have 2? Well, then 2 mod 2 gives me 1. And we're only iterating while n is greater than 1. So the way I'm coding this is actually that means I should have an arrow here. But it means that I'm actually going to check if n is 1 here because I do want to print it out. So if n divided by 2 gives me 1, then first of all, set n equal to n over 2 and print it out. And then I believe that will do it. Let me sort of look here. Let me give some more spaces so it's easier to read. Actually, I know I'm going to do n divided by 2 every time, regardless of whether or not it equals 1. So actually, let's go ahead and do that outside of the if. And then since I changed the n, I'm just checking if n is 1. Cool. And notice that when I come back up to the while loop when this ends, n will be 1, which is not greater than 1, and we will terminate. OK, so let's try this out. Going down to the main function here, um, let's actually ask the user for what number to put in. So I'm going to do printf. Let me space here so I can see a little easier. So printf, hello. Give me a positive integer, please. All right. Scan f. Ooh, I need some sort of variable. So let's use, I'm going to just call it x. Um, just because I can. So then percent %d, and we're going to read in a value. Now with scan, remember, we always give it the address of whatever variable we're storing in, because I want to store this number at this location. That's how the scan f works. All right. Hello, give me a positive integer, please. We type it in, and then we're going to call the colots function. So I'm actually going to print out colots of whatever number we were given. And that's going to be x. And then finally, I'm going to call colots iterative on whatever number we were given. And I always have to return for main, so return 0. OK, let's give this a go. Save that. I'm going to switch over to the terminal now. All right. So there's my file right there, my colots.c. So I'm going to do gcc-o colots, colots.c. And I got some warnings. So let's see. Oh, OK. How silly of me. So let's switch back to the code right quick. So if you notice right here, if if n equals 1, print f, I never put the actual thing that needs to be printed out. So there we go. I'm putting that. And let me check up here. I also neglected to do that right there. So let's put that in. So whenever I use printf and I use percent %d, I need to actually give it what I want to print out in that position. So I gave one here, here, here. Looks good. Save. Back to the terminal. All right, let's try recompiling that. Cool, now that worked. Let me just clear my screen so it's clear. And now let's do dash, dot slash colots. Hello, give me a positive integer, please. Let's do 10. All right, and we can see colots of 10 goes 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, and then ends. And I don't have a new line there, so I'll fix that when we go back. But let's go ahead and look at this. Does this do what we expected it to? You always want to ask yourself that. 
Because maybe, it will happen more often than you think, maybe your code just happened to bumble out the answer you were looking for, even though your logic was terrible. So it's always a good idea, or at least to bumble out some sort of numbers. So let's check that these make sense. I gave it a 10, boom. 10 is odd, so I should divide it by 2, which is a 5, cool. 5 is odd, so I should do 3 times it plus 1, so 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16, cool. 16 is uh, even, divide by 2, 8, even, divide by 2, 4, 2, divide by 2 is 1, and then we are done. All right, let's switch back to the code. Okay, so this is an iterative way to, do, to print out the terms for a Colots conjecture. Now, I also, uh, the reason I used x here, I could have used n, and I actually will. I'll just change that right here. And this will still work. So the thing is that when you have an n in one function or a variable, it's different from that same named variable here if you're passing by value. So basically, I have copied the value from main into this function before I use it. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, I mentioned there's a way to do this recursively. So let's go ahead and make that guy void colots recursive. Now, the logic here is going to be incredibly similar. You're going to be checking if the number is even or odd and so on. But the thing with recursion is I'm actually going to call the function I am in. And that can be a bit of a mind bender. It takes a lot of getting used to for, for most people. Um, certainly for me, it took a lot of getting used to. Okay, so first things first, no while loop, because I'm not doing this iteratively, I'm doing it recursively, so there's not going to be a while loop. Let's do if n is greater than 1, go ahead and do whatever we're going to do inside of here. So if n is greater than 1, actually, do, 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 do. I want to check stuff that's going to end first. So let's, let's do this. Let's do if n is 1. What do I want to do? I just want to print out my number and go home. That's it. So I would do that and then return. Simple enough. But what if n is not 1? Well, then we want to check if it's odd or even. So if n mod 2 gives me a 1, if it's odd, then I want to print out my number, followed by an arrow, because I know there's going to be another term. And then don't forget to actually put it here this time. And then what do I do? What I do is I call the thing I'm in again. And what do I give it? I give it 3 times n. Whoa. 3 times n plus 1. Let me check the spelling here. Colots recursive. OK, cool. So <clears throat> what is this doing? If n is odd, print it out. But then call this exact same function on 3 times n plus 1. So what is this going to do? It's going to stop right here. It's going to go, ooh, let's call this. So imagine if all this code was just copied over to the right here. So boop, this, we got the exact same thing. But now I'm given the new value. So that new value goes in. Is it 1? No. OK. Is it odd? Oh, OK. Do this. Otherwise, and we haven't coded this up yet, is it even? OK. Then do this. And it carries on. So you literally have. You can think of it as a, several copies of this code running and checking stuff and coming back. So it's called recursive because it's going into itself. OK. If it's not odd, then it must be even. So if else if n mod 2 is 0, once again, print out the number. and call this function on n divided by 2. Now I'm noticing something here. Just give some spaces so it's easier to read. I'm noticing something. Since I'm checking if it's 1, and when it's 1, I print it out and notice I don't do an arrow, and then I stop. When it's, when it's 1, I know I'm not going to print anything else. If I've gotten past this guy, and I'm looking at this code, then in both cases, do you see that I print the exact same thing? I print the number followed by an arrow before calling 3 times n plus 1 or n over 2 on it. So actually, I could take this and put it out here. I don't need the two copies inside my if statements. And whoa, OK. So if I don't need the two copies of this, 
I can put it here and then just do these things right here. Just if it's odd, call the Colbot's recursive function on 3 times n plus 1. Otherwise, call it on n over 2. And I just continue to do that. Well, let's see if this works. So saving. Let's go down here. Instead of Colot's iterative, let's call Colot's recursive. All right, go switch the terminal. All right, let's compile this. Getting a warning. Oh, mm -mm -mm. Hmm. that's interesting. Let's switch back to the code and see what it's complaining about. All right, so it complained up here. Oh, same thing. I neglected to put the N. Okay, but I put it here. All right, apparently that is my error. You will find as you continue to code, you're going to have a personal error that you are particularly bad about. And this apparently is mine. All right, so I've coded up this recursive function. I've made sure that down in main, I'm calling colots recursive and not colots iterative. Let's go ahead and switch the terminal. All right, here I am. Let's go ahead and compile this. So gc dash o colots, colots dot c. All right, and let's call it. Hello, give me a positive integer, please. All right, I'll give it 10. And we see here it prints out colots, goes down from 10 down to 1. Super cool. Go ahead and extend that a bit. OK. Now let's go ahead and call it again. Let's give it 17. There we go. So we get 17, 52, 26. And what I wanted to point out that I think is kind of cool is that if you look at this 10 down to 1, that looks exactly the same as when I just gave it 10. And then, so let's think about this. 17 goes to 52 and then et cetera. So let's try something else. Let's try colots of 34. Hmm. Notice we've got 34, 17, 52. So what's interesting about the colots conjecture is that, or at least the colots pattern, because we're not really proving the conjecture, I suppose. We're just playing around with the sequence. Is that what's often going to happen is as soon as you see a number, from that point onward, you're going to see the exact same pattern. So just to prove that to you, let's grab 13. See how 13 goes 40, 20, etc. Let's just call the function on this. Give it 13. And look, we get the exact same sequence, 13 down to 1. So even though it appeared in the middle of something else up here, you get the same chains over and over again. So it's pretty interesting. It seems like that should be really helpful to proving that this always goes down to 1, and yet no one has been able to do it yet. So want, want, want. But there we go. Let me go ahead and switch over to Sublime just for the nice visuals. Ooh, look so pretty. OK, so we have now coded this up. So again, just wanted to emphasize there are two ways to do this. The way most people start with is going to be this iterative function right here, because you just make a while loop and you just go through. And it makes sense to us. There's no brain bending really outside of looping. And you just go through. If it's odd, print it out, multiply by 3, add 1. If it's even, Print it out, divide by 2. If we're at 1, print and stop. Recursion is you're doing the same thing logically, right? If it's 1, print out and stop. If it's odd, print it out and then change it. If it's even, print it out and change it. But with recursion, you're literally calling the thing that you're in right now. So I'm in colots recursive. And then in the case that I'm odd, I call colots recursive with 3 and plus 1. Or in the case that's even, I call it with n over 2. They both achieve the same end. It's just a matter of taste. And some, some problems actually make more sense recursively. And it does kind of look like the code, I could make this even more compact if I was a little more clever here. Probably the iterative could be more compact, but I think, I don't know, recursion is just cool, man. So there we go. This has been coding up the Colots conjecture in C. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Till next time.